real cases before a real judge. And now, enter the courtroom of Judge Mathis. Plaintiff Gary McElroy was married to the defendant, and they have two children. Gary claims the defendant is violent and addicted to pain pills, and he filed a restraining order against her after she fled the state with their children. Gary's suing his ex-wife for child support. Defendant Debbie McElroy admits that she became addicted to pain pills after enduring years of physical abuse at the hands of Gary. Debbie claims Gary threatened her with a gun, threw her down the stairs, and often left her with bruises all over her body. And she insists she has been sending money directly to her daughters. Tell me what's going on. Well, sir, me and Debbie married in 1989. We had two children. We had a little bit of an interrupted marriage. I mean, different things back and forth. I uh, like to run the bars a little bit, hustle pool, different things like that. You like to drink and chase women, is that your point? <laughs> No, no, sir. I didn't. I didn't ever have no out of marriage relationships ever. And I oh, yeah. drank a few beers. That was so you it. just like to drink and chase men at pool. <laughs> and I'm saying shoot, <laughs> p shoot pool uh, with, I, with your buddies. I, I know you're. I know you're funny, Honor, and that is funny. But no. Who uh, <laughs> said that is it's, funny? <laughs> it's just, just us on pool, sir. All right, go ahead. Anyway, and... That caused problems in the marriage, obviously. Obviously, back and forth. Mm -hmm. it, it did. And then... Why and, didn't you stop then? Well, I did. Okay. And in 1997, uh, things changed out a little bit where I thought I was changing my life. So I tried to, and in 98, I did. I used to weigh 310 pounds. I stopped drinking soda, stopped frying foods, <laughs> changed my life out completely. But just things were different. Well, she started going to the different apparitions to see the Virgin Mary and different things like that. And one day I'd come home and I noticed some of my medicine was missing, some of my pain medicine, and I blamed a relative that was known for stealing people's medicines. And that's the way I kept it for a long time. I blamed them. You know, I was blind to it. And then I started thinking it might have been Debbie, but I wasn't so sure. So I held off on it. And then in 2000, I come home one day and had an extra bedroom. It was all fixed up, new <laughs> furniture. And I said, so you fixed up a bedroom? She said, well, we need to talk. And she said, I had a vision from God. He told me not to sleep with you no more until you marry me in the church. Because we got married by a minister in my dad's front yard. You were married by a minister, though? Yeah, but she wanted me to be married in the Catholic church. Okay. So, been fed up with a little bit. I said, uh... I had a vision from God also. He told me to divorce your <laughs> And that's what happened in 98? No, this happened in 2000. I walked straight out the door that day, went to the local CVS, bought a do-it-yourself divorce kit, was divorced in 30 days. <laughs> Okay. 30 days? All right. Now, you're suing about child support. Let me allow her to give some background, then we'll get into the specifics. Ma'am? Your Honor, we were, during our marriage, 11 years, there, I did develop a drug addiction to pain pills due to the fact there was abusive, a very abusive in relationship. There was times I got thrown down steps, mm. had a little gun held to my head, massive, massive bruising all over me, of course not the face. Sure, I never put a gun her head. The family, I was really close to his family. They all knew about it. And there was, I was pushed downstairs, had a couple broken bones. What would bones they say when you tell them? To leave him. Okay. But I didn't because I come from a broken home. I wanted my kids to have a mom and dad mm -hmm. no matter what. And we divorced in 99. After that, I moved my mom into the house because she died of cancer, I was taking care of her. And my dad and my grandma, they all died at the same time, which my addiction became even stronger. And that just led to one thing, I mean, I was always took care of my kids and stuff. I worked two jobs sometimes during our marriage. And yeah, he would, he would always go to the bars and stuff. He was really more meaner when he would um, drink. Came back, yeah. you know, get drunk and come back and abuse That's you. That's when that would happen. Mainly not before then, maybe verbal, but. Sir, did you physically abuse her when you got drunk? Sir, there have been times we had mutual combat. Have it, can I say that I, <laughs> can, can I say that I abused her in a way that beating her down and stuff? No. 
So did I keep her from swinging at me and stuff many times? Yes, because she would get violent. As, you, as she said, she Trying was addicted to, to pain medicine. Myself. And pain medicine does, can make you violent, too. No, she said all she's ever done in terms of uh, physical contact with you is defend herself. No, sir. She has been the aggressor? She's been the aggressor many times. Matter of fact, I have a restraining order from where she threw me down my, dare, my dad's stairs, which is about 26 steps. That's so it. The restraining order was from when I went over to get the girls and my youngest daughter had broken her ankle at one time and she had gotten into the truck and wanted to go with me. She was crying and he kept pulling her out by that leg and I told, kept telling him not to do that, not to do that because you're going to hurt her and he kept doing that so yeah, I pushed him. I did whatever I had to do to get him away from her. This is after she had already fled the state to California for 17 days yes, with my I did. children. I went I to felt California. Living in the streets of LA. What's that? She fled the state with my children come to get them for catechism. I had custody of the girls. But but they had been living with me for four yeah, why months. Why did you leave the state with to them? To get him to get them away from them. I oh, wanted he was to abusing them. them. No, he never abused them. And they why do you were, want to get them away from their father? They was not happy. They would, did not want. They, he used to live with his and mom So you have and dad. to take his children out of state because what? Wanted to them to have a try to have a better life. They was not happy there. Happy I didn't in know, what way? I. They did not like it there. They what didn't they like? Nothing about it. They wanted gotcha. to. Gotcha. Good enough. You won't tell me any specifics, ma'am. And he has an order of protection against you. So I'm inclined to believe him. She's out of vision from God. He told me not to sleep with you no more until you marry me in the church. Been fed up with a little bit. I said, uh, I had a vision from God also. He told me to divorce your <laughs> Defendant Debbie McElroy was married to the plaintiff, and she claims he was so abusive that he threw her down the stairs and threatened her with a gun. Anything else you want me to know? Just Did you tell him in 98 that the Lord told you not to sleep with him anymore? No, I did not. Okay, what happened that ultimately caused you all? Just from the abuse alone. I said, Gary, I'm gonna move into one of the girls' room because we had a big house, move into one of the girls' room. This don't work no more, and and I thought, well, well, if I'm in there, if he comes home drunk and stuff, I can lock the door. There'll be no problems and stuff. I won't have to worry about no abuse. And, and I, so, tell me uh, that night what happened. That night when he came home, my oldest daughter, she would always kind of get sick to her stomach a lot, knowing if he wasn't there, that there was going to something happen. Mm -hmm. She was in the bathroom, across the hall, mm -hmm. took her back, went back to the bedroom. In between time, he had came home, and I remember there was a rocking chair. I remember picking up the rocking chair trying to throw him, throw it at him because he was coming at me. That's when he had the gun he pulled to my head, uh, and I said that would be it. And that's when I permanently stayed there in her bedroom with her. Okay. Sir, the incident she just described is completely false. When this incident happened, when I divorced up a little bit after noon. When Sir, she I don't know this, who to believe with all this. Let's get to the child support. All I do know is you do have a protection order. And I was divorced him. in 2000. Here's the child support order where she's back arrears of 18000 Okay, tell me how she came to... Let me see it, please. How did she come to old child support? You kept the kids? I, I fought for custody kids and one custody kids in 2004. And you had the children, and she failed to pay child support for how many years? She made five payments in the time that I've had the children. And that's been eight and a half years. Eight so. and a half years. Ma'am, what do you say to this? I sent them money to their self because I knew if I sent him money, they would not get it. Who do you think Even provided the food and shelter? Him. him and his and family. And he provided it for the children. But I always sent them no, money. No, no, no. Uh, let's just talk this out. He provided the food and the shelter for the children. Mm -hmm. You don't think you owed him some money to compensate him for providing food and shelter for your children? Yes. That's what child support is based on. That's what child, it's not based on you sending the money for kids to buy candy. Or whatever and you send it to her. They needed food and shelter. He provided that for them. So you, as the other parent, should pay your part. And so unless they took the money you gave them, the children, and took it to the landlord, <laughs> then you haven't provided food and shelter for them. And that's the primary purpose of child support. You get people in here all the time to say, well, I bought the clothes, I did this and I did that. Well, did you put a roof over their head and provide dinner every day? 
That's the main purpose of child support. So all this buying them this and buying them that, they need a roof over their heads and food before any of that. And you sending them money, they're not taking it to the landlord. All right. So eight and a half years, you've always sent the money to them? Yeah, that's a few times I did send to him. And during my addiction, no, I didn't. Okay. But I have been clean now going on four years. Good. Glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. You've been working the last four years? I do. Off and on jobs. It's right. hard to get a job. Well, I'm going to enforce the child support order. It orders you to pay $18,000, but he's willing to accept $5,000 today, which is the maximum in small claims court. And that's what you're willing to accept, the $5,000, right? Yes, sir. All right. Have a good day. Judge me for the claim. Why has she been clean for four years? I'm really proud of her. I hope she does well. There's nothing that I have against her. I here she's got cancer now, and I hope the best for her, and hope she makes it through all that. Well, I mean, I have nothing against her. I'm, she's she's the mother of my children. I forgave you a long time ago.